Prophecy is something that uh, has been misunderstood in the church. It's been poorly taught. Uh, individuals have had bad experiences. And so uh, we've seen way too many times than not people throw the baby out with the bath water. And, and maybe because there have been some things out of order or bad experience, people just push it away and, and, and don't want that prophetic gift in their life. And the problem is, is if you push the prophetic out of the church, you become a stale, dry, religious place. And maybe you've had a, a bad experience, but how many have had a bad experience at the dentist, but you don't stop brushing your teeth? <laughs> and so what we want to do is we want to bring proper order. When we're, when we're launching this church or birthing this church, I really felt that we're supposed to build this church on the apostolic and the prophetic, as scripture has told us to do. And so we have our apostolic elders, my spiritual fathers, our overseers here in the house today. And... Something that's interesting about mercy culture is the prophetic gift just flows here in this place. Yeah, it's yeah. not even hard. It just happens all the time because there is a, a desire, a pulling on, an expectation, a demand that we put on the prophetic or the spirit of God. So when I say prophecy, what do I mean by prophecy? I mean communicating a divine message from God, foretelling or revealing the future to speak a new message from God to his people or to speak on God's behalf. Prophets are delivering words or messages from God to his people. Pastor Matt Wakefield preached an amazing message on the gift of prophecy. It's on our YouTube in the last series. A prophet is a spokesperson, someone that walks in this fivefold ministry office. But then there are prophetic people that hear God's voice and they prophesy. And a lot of people mix up someone that prophesies or, or that prophetic gift comes upon them and the office of a prophet. But you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. In fact, Paul says, I wish that you would all prophesy. We see in scripture, men and women prophesying. We see uh, children, according to scripture, will prophesy. So this is something that lifts up and benefits the church. When we say the word presbytery, what we're talking about is the order, the biblical order of public prophetic ministry. We find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 where scripture teaches us to have two or three prophets minister, prophesy, and then we weigh them or we judge them. You know, that word for judge in, in scripture is to be discerning, not critical. And so really what we're doing is we're looking, we're listening for what God has to say. Now, how many know God speaks through his word and his word prophesies to us? Yeah, amen. But he also speaks to his sons and his daughters. Jesus said, I have much more to say to you and I have to go so that the Holy Spirit is gonna say it to you. The helper's gonna come. And so the voice of God is something that is absolutely beautiful. But here's what I want you to understand is people get so caught up in the prophetic and because they don't understand it or they've heard things or these bad experiences, they push it away. And I would encourage you, don't push it away today. Pull it close today. Don't worry about being prophetic. Just be a son, a daughter, a servant of the Lord. Hear God's voice and say what he says. Don't worry about calling yourself a prophet. I love what John Paul Jackson said, who was a prophet in the, in the office of a prophet. He said, if you're a prophet, you don't have to tell yourself or you don't have to tell people you're a prophet. People will tell you. Jesus gave a word to a woman at a well and she said, I see you're a prophet. People will recognize that on you. Your only job is to hear God and obey God. Last thing I would encourage you with, with this exhortation is we say this all the time at Mercy Culture, the best thing that you can do is give all your attention to God. The worst thing that you can do is take any of the attention onto yourself. And so if you stood up in this service today and started releasing a word, we would stop you, silence you, it'd be embarrassing, it'd be awkward, but that's okay because we have a value of trust and we lead into awkward and we will help build trust with you. Because that would be out of order and inappropriate. We have trusted apostolic voices that minister in the prophetic that are gonna come and prophesy today. And here's the thing, is we, we want people to grow in, in prophecy. I've heard pastors say, well, we don't want any parking lot prophets. And really what they're saying is we don't want people being weird. But, but I was at the Axel Creative community on Friday night and you don't have to be prophesying to be weird. 
Pastor Jasmine was preaching, I think last Sunday, didn't she do an amazing job? <laughs> but she said something about young people be caking. Caking. I'm like, that's weird. I, what, what, I don't know. I'm getting old. I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, you could be weird with or without the prophetic gift. <laughs> you don't need the prophetic gift to be weird. So if you have a word for somebody, don't be weird. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be weird. Turn to the other person and say, I saved you for last. I'm talking to you. <laughs> So, so it's really, really simple. You don't have to go to someone and say, I had a word from God from you. Let them determine if it's a word from God. Let them judge. Let them discern it. Just say, you know what? I got something in my heart. There's something in my spirit I'd like to share with you. Is that okay? Can I submit this to you? And you submit that in humility. Man, it's amazing how people receive that. They're like, I think that's from God. You're like, yeah, I did too. But I wanted you to determine that. Not me convince you of that. And so I want to let you know, we want parking lot prophets. We want our teachers at MC Prep prophets. We want our connectors prophets. We want our children workers prophets. We want you to prophesy in the parking lot. We want you to prophesy in the uh, uh, MC Prep. We want you to prophesy, not in the bathrooms. That's weird. It's going a little too far. <laughs> Here, knock on the stall. I got a word for you. You're like, no, no. Uh, pastor said that's where we draw the line. How many know laughter is good? So would you just lay your hands on your heart right now and would you just say, heart, receive. Heart, be soft. Holy Spirit, we want everything that you have. So we say, speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. I pray specifically that you would deal with everybody that had been in manipulative, unhealthy, religious out of order atmospheres. And Lord, I pray that those moments and situations don't hinder this, but I pray today we'll actually heal them of those moments. So Holy Spirit, we invite you, replace all of our words with yours. We say, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. And if you're in agreement, say amen. 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 Well, I'm honored to welcome our apostolic elders. Could you give them a hand as they come? Pass. Oh, no, you guys stay down. I, I messed this up. I messed this up. You stay there. We have Dr. Michael Brown in the house. <laughs> Pastor Zane Anderson. We have Pastor Jan Anderson. How much do we love them? Can we honor them? They all ministered this month in July. And our third apostolic elder, Pastor Tom Lane, wasn't able to be here this morning, but he sent a word for the entire house. And so we're going to watch this word, and then we'll enter into the prophetic time. So watch this word from our apostolic elder, Pastor Tom Lane. Hey, Mercy Culture. Presbytery is an exciting time in the life of the church. Prophetic ministry confirms God's work, builds us up for his service, and brings peace and comfort to the situations we may be facing. Although I can't be with you in person, I want to share a word of commendation and encouragement with you. I received this word as I prayed for you and this prophetic time for you and the church as you experience God's word together. I humbly submit this word to Pastors Landon and Heather and the elders uh, of the church for their processing and consideration and to you for your strengthening and encouragement. James 1.22 says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, and goes away, and at once forgets what it, what it was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and pers perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he'll be blessed in his doing. Religion is the expression of systems and processes that facilitate our ministry for God. It becomes the way that others can know and experience the result of our doing ministry for God. You, Mercy Culture, are doers. And not just doers, are not just hearers of the word. The fruit of your doing is your food distribution, your service and engagement with the community, your justice reform ministry, and your desire to advance God's kingdom in Waco and Dallas and other places maybe yet to be discovered. Not to mention 
the way you host the presence of God in your weekend events. All these doings have the stamp of God's favor and blessing. Keep persevering in your work. You are in your sacrificial doing of ministry, reflecting God's heart. Therefore, he's blessing your doing. I give you this caution. <clears throat> Be careful to guard the purity of your devotion and your service in all that you're doing. And keep yourself from pride and a sense of entitlement as you do the work of ministry. These qualities are the colors of the world and can subtly stain your doing of ministry with a worldly flavor rather than the true color of God's kingdom. I don't, I don't think you're there yet. I'm just encouraging you not to go too fast. And I give you a heads up uh, to make you aware that in the next 18 to 24 months, there's gonna be unprecedented resistance to your work. Know this, that the, the best weapon is expressed in prayer, and the more that you pray, the more you strengthen your ability to stand and fight. Uh, and so trust God. Be careful not to move out in your own strength or timing rather than in obedience to God's leading. During the same period of resistance, you'll have increased opportunities. They'll come from unexpected places with the promise of mind-blowing results. Keep your focus on me, says the Lord. Be careful not to evaluate the opportunities by what your eyes can see. Listen to me and I'll lead you and differentiate the good opportunities from those that represent my good and perfect will for you. Finally, I heard this for you. Well done. Well done, Mercy Culture. God is and has done much through you already. There's more to come, so keep your focus on Him, your service to people, and use your programs and resources to serve those two priorities. God is with you and will bless you as you keep your focus on Him. Please welcome Chris and Tara Klesis. Good morning. You look good. Tell them they look good. If I can digress just for a moment, can I say something? Welcome home, Pastor Landon and Heather. You were missed. So good to see you. And that word about expectancy, that's not prophetic, that's pathetic, so <laughs> knock it off. I just, I just, I've fallen in love with you. And, and we, I don't think we've ever met, have we? I don't, I don't think so. And I think some of the others, I don't think we've met. But one of the things and the way I, I operate in this thing called the prophet, I'm not a prophet. But as I operate in the prophetic, I, I a lot of times say, you know, when they, when they want us to do this presbytery gig, I say, hey, can, can, D, can you just send me some pictures of who's, I don't want details, I don't need to know nothing, not supposed to know nothing. So I've had your picture for, for a little while, and I've just, I've fallen in love with you. And, and one of the ways I connect with God is I just walk with him and kind of walk with you. You've been walking with me for I don't know how long, how many weeks it's been, and that's when the downloads come. And so I just want to submit to you, as Pastor Landon just instructed us, and you can judge it, and if you don't like it, don't tell me you don't like it, okay? And, and smile like, whoa, man, right on, because that just, that helps the anointing. How many know what I'm talking about, huh? Been there, done that. So I'm just going to unload what the Holy Spirit has downloaded. And I don't think I'm unfamiliar to you being a part of here. We've not met, but I've been here. I, I, I saw kind of a mental picture that there is a grace gate that's opening over your lives. I don't know what that all means. We prophesy in part. We see in part. I wish I would have got more clarity. I, I said, what does it mean? And the Lord has often said to me, just deliver what I told you to deliver. They'll get it. But there is a gate of grace that's beginning to open to you. And the Lord said, be ready for some divine surprises. They're coming. I heard this word. It's funny. It's interesting, not funny, that we sang 
this was one of the themes of this morning's gathering. And, and, and you know, this is all written down in, in longhand, so it's not like I wrote it real quick. But I want you to hear the word. The Lord says, I'm going to make a way and release provision to another level. Something's coming significantly in terms of provision. And the picture I got was the book of Ruth, where, where God told, or, or Boaz told, which is a type of the Holy Spirit, you need to leave some handfuls on purpose. It really ministered to me because I felt like what I heard the Lord saying, tell my daughter and son, I'm leaving some handfuls on purpose. In that book of Ruth, in fact, I would really encourage you to hang out in the book of Ruth a little bit because it's you. It's your story. It's who you are. And the Lord said, I'm going to leave them handfuls on purpose. Quickly, I want to move. The Lord said, tell them I trust them. What a good word. (laughs) I trust them. Tell them they've been tested and didn't know they were being tested and they have passed the test. They have been tested, didn't know they were being tested, and they passed the test. Can I add a little Zane, ad, uh, 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 you know, addendum? He knew you would pass it. He just needed you to know you would pass it. He didn't have any doubt you were not going to pass this test. God doesn't test us so he can find out anything about us. He tests us so we can find out about us. Somebody say amen. amen. That's good right now. And the Lord said, tell them it's graduation time. A more season is coming. I also saw the picture, just this prophetic picture of, and I don't know if you wear glasses, but I saw you putting on glasses. And the Lord says, they're going to see at a new level with a greater clarity and a greater level of revelation. This was especially exciting. They're going to see me in ways they've never seen me before. You're going to see things about him that you've never seen before. And you've walked with him, but get ready. Um, and, then, and then just a real word of, of a prophetic counsel, go after the dream. And I don't know what that means. But the Lord said, go after the dream. It's really not your dream anyway. It's my dream. I snuck it in there while you were sleeping one night. And you woke up thinking, wow, maybe we can do this. And the Lord says, the Lord says, go after it because I'm in it. And in fact, you can do it. I think you know what I'm talking about. Psalms 37, I will give you because you've delighted in me. I'll give you the desires of your heart. This is your your season to go after. And then I heard the word, and Jan, come. Or no, who's next? Jan? Okay, come. Then I heard the word world, world changers, and I thought, oh, God, they're world changers. They said, no, they're world changers, but their house is filled with world changers. And it really ministered to me. I said, what, Lord? He says, he says I said, you mean they're not? No, oh, they are, but you need to tell them they are raising up a covey of world changers. It's your children. And, and listen to this. This is so tender. The enemy knows who they are. And that's why they've been targeted. That's why he would like to take them out. But the Lord wants to give you a word of just real comfort. No weapon formed against them will prosper. And I don't know what this means, but even their names are significant. And I don't know how many you got, and I don't know their names, but the Lord told me to tell you, you didn't just pick their names, he gave you those names, and they are significant and prophetic to their future and their destiny. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Um, Isn't it so fun to be setting up here and thousands of people watching you? (laughs) I, when I started to pray for you guys, I saw a clock, and I felt like I heard the Lord say um, that there's something in your lives that you feel like the time is running out, or the clock is against you, or you're behind time, and I heard him say he's going to redeem Mm. the time for you. Amen. So there's some situations in your life 
that you look at and possibly struggle with regret. But God said he's going to redeem it. Come on, Jesus. And then I saw, um, I saw this story in the Bible. It's actually Joab in 2 Samuel. And Joab has two runners that are running to King David. Hallelujah. I don't know if you know the story or not. I'm just going to paraphrase. But one of them runs the fastest, and he arrives at King David's presence, and he doesn't have anything to say. And the second runner arrives later, but he's got the message. So good. So good. And I heard the Lord say to you that you are that second runner. Uh -huh. And he's going to break off the comparisons off of you, Tara. Uh -huh. That you're not looking at the other runner. Chris, that you're not looking at those that are around you. But the Lord said he is refining the message that is within you that goes to the king, that goes to him. So I just speak confidently that his redeeming power you're going to see in fullness and the message he has given you is needed and necessary for the kingdom. And there's going to be a confidence that's going to begin to arise from your hearts, from your lives in this season. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jan. Thank you, Jesus. So the, the verse God laid on my heart during worship from Isaiah 43, 2, it's about, it's a promise to Israel, but I felt it tied in with your own life in the past. God saying, when you walk through the waters, they won't overflow you, the fires won't burn you. What I heard the Spirit saying was, as you learn to trust me in the valley, as you learn to trust me in the trial, learn to trust me on the mountain. When the favor is there, when the grace is there, don't look for the bottom to fall out or what's going to happen or think back to attacks in the past. Instead, seize that moment on the mountaintop. That same word clarity is a word God dropped in my heart. That this is the time you'll see like you haven't seen before and understand. And when you get it, grab it because it's going to be words for the rest of your life. It's going to be insights. It's going to be things that will be marching orders for years ahead. So trust him on the mountaintop as you trusted him in the valley. What you learn there, now live out, now apply, now bring to others in the midst of their valley. And may clarity come. And in scripture, 1 Timothy 4, through the laying on of hands, yes. gifts were imparted to Timothy. And, and I feel as we now, as a, as a presbytery with Pastor Landon, lay hands on you, that it's time for divine impartation. Come on. And I know there are things God's put in me faith and courage that we're in part, but also that supernatural clarity. Ride the wave when the spirit moves on, on you. Grab on. hold of it. Ride the wave. You'll go to places you've never been before. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So as your servants, as you have imparted to us, we impart to them faith and courage and clarity and vision and grace to do all you've called them to do. You can't do it. God through you Come on. will do it. You and yourself can't do it. God through you will do it. May faith and courage and vision and clarity rise. May they find themselves in a place they've never been before, sustained by your grace with a flow to minister grace to others. In Jesus' name. And, and, and Father, I just lift up these um, these world changers. I, I don't know their names, but you know their names. You chose their names. And Father God, you have already even set them apart, even chosen them, even now, filled them with your Holy Spirit. And Father God, there is a destiny that awaits them. So we ask that that anointing leads them and guides them. Mama and Daddy, you've got some world changers. You've got some bow and arrows. You've got some swordsmen. You've got a man and woman of God that's going to change the course of of history. We declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Would you give the Clefses a hand? Come on, just lay hands on your own heart right now. As we were just praying over the Clefses, I just felt in my spirit that the Lord is going to be begin to speak to people all day long. 
prophecy is contagious. I just even feel, even now, if there's questions on your heart, there's things that, 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 that you're desiring to know. I remember I was a young man in a, a prophetic service like this and everyone kept getting called out but me. And, and I said to the Lord, how come I never get called out? How come I never get chosen? And the Lord instantly spoke to me and says, because I speak to you. So I just pray right now. I, I, I pray, Father, would you speak to your servants? Would you speak to your servants? I pray right now. Questions are being answered. I pray right now. Answers. Answers are coming. Direction is coming. I declare, let the prophetic word be contagious right now in this house. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. This is PJ and Emily Viscovi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I can just tag on to what Pastor Landon just said, no prophecy is of private interpretation. And as God speaks to them, if it resonates in your heart, say, yes, Lord, that's mine too. Amen? God's a big God, and his prophecies can go everywhere. So I really want to affirm what you just said, that it's in the house. It's not just here. It's all over. The other thing is you can help us. You can say amen. You can say hallelujah. You can talk to us. Come on. You are mercy culture, aren't you? So as the prophetic words go and you know them, say yes. Yes, yes, yes. And like. Chris and Tara, we've just fallen. I don't, I don't think we've ever met. Maybe, I don't know. I don't remember. I'm old. One time? Okay. Um, but you've been walking with me and Jan. Okay. Can, can, just stand here with me, okay? Just, I'm real nervous. I like my wife. You got the mic? Oh, man. She's just not with it today. I don't know. I'm going to trust a lot of her prophetic words because they're, get your act together up here. So, so like all of them, I've been, I've been walking. You've been on my prayer walks and my, I connect with God like pastor running is my thing. And I've been doing a lot of running down my trail. It's not a Trinity trail. It's a God love trail. And I've been hearing things, and I'm really excited what I've heard. I heard these words so clear. Tell them I'm going to take their, cre their creativity to a new level. The creativity that's on you. I don't know everything you do. I don't even know what you do. But I just heard the word. There's a creative gift, and there are, there are gifts that you didn't know you had. This season, they're going to begin to manifest. Oh, yes. Things that you even didn't know you had. I saw specifically you with a pen in your hand. And it wasn't like at the computer. It was a pen in your hand. And I heard this real clear. Three words. Write, write, and write some more. That's more than three words. But I, but I heard so clear. It was right, right, right. I added the some more, but that's okay. But I heard it. Write, write, and write some more. It's, it's more than just little things, it's books. And it's more than books, Peter. It's, it's like, I, I, I'm not hesitant to use the word because I heard it, but I don't want it just to be secular. It's a curriculum. It's a curriculum. It's, it's helping, and that's the word. And I thought, Lord, curriculum, that's kind of schoolish and kind of collegey. And, and that's not bad. Don't misunderstand me. But I heard it's a curriculum that's going to help people understand, give clarity, give direction to show them how to do what they want to do, but don't know how to do it. Does that make sense? So let's prophesy right, right, right. Get with it. The Lord also, the Lord also said, I'm going to break off some, and Jan mentioned it f with Chris and Tara, but I feel it's for you. We don't compare notes. She gets hers, I get mine, and, and I go first, and she steals some of mine. I know she does. But I heard the word, I'm going to break off some regrets. And the Lord said, remember not. Let it go. Yeah, it was painful. It was wrong. The word I got was exploited, taken advantage of, 
Somebody else got what you were supposed to get, but they manipulated to get it, and it caused a lot of deep, deep wounding and a lot of deep regret, and the Lord said, let it go, Isaiah 43, behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the thing of the past. We got exhorted, I know you've forgiven and all that stuff, but this is the season to finally bury it, not just forgive it. I'm doing a new thing. <laughs> I heard this, and I especially heard it for both of you, but, but Emily, especially for you, the enemy knows your voice, and it bothers him. The, the word I got was, it irritates him. He gets irritated when he hears your voice, and he has tried to mute it. He's tried to stop it, even used people to stop that, that verbal gift. And, um, but the Lord says, I'm about to amplify it to a whole other level. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Right, right, right. Sing, sing, sing. Sing the songs that are in you from your mother's womb. Sing the songs he wove into you while you were swimming around in that womb. You didn't know he was putting melodies and sounds and phrases and songs. And a lot of the songs I heard the Lord say are going to be going to be breakthrough songs where the demonic assignments on people's lives are going to be broken when you let it go. The Lord says, I'm, I'm coming, and it goes along with what I said a moment ago about break off regrets. I'm coming to bring healing in a deep area where there's been deep betrayal. Deep betrayal. where lies have been said about you that weren't true. Things have been said about you that weren't true. And the Lord specifically said, and he used the word specific, I'm coming to bring breakthrough in a very specific area. And you know what that area is, I don't, but there's a very specific area, and I'm gonna give them beauty for their ashes. Yes, yes, Jesus. Beauty yes. for their ashes. I'm going to vindicate, I'm going to vindicate, I'm going to make it right. I'm going to restore what the enemy has taken and the teaching gift that is on both of you. I'm going to sharpen it. And you are a new breed of the prophetic. Don't try to fit in with past prophetic giftings you have seen. You're a whole new breed out of the box of the prophetic. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 Um, when I went to pray for you, I heard the word light, and I saw this shaft of light. And I heard the Lord say that you're seeing something, but you're not seeing it clearly. And then it was like the shaft of light just exploded. Hallelujah. And he brought Revelations chapter 3 to my mind where they were to buy gold garments, and they were to take salve and place it upon their eyes. And I saw that the Lord was going to take a revelatory salve, salve, however you want to pronounce it, and put it upon your spiritual eyes. Hallelujah. Because what you are seeing is just a measure. But as this revelatory anointing comes upon your spiritual sight, it's going to now come into full light full understanding, and where you've been wrestling how to do what you see, you will now be released to do it. And I heard the Lord say um, that you tremble. And my first thought was, of course, fear. And I want to read you the scripture because he took me to Ezra chapter 10, 3 and 4. There are those that tremble at the word of the Lord. So your trembling is with the word of God to you. Oh, yeah. 
And Ezra says, arise. For this matter that I have placed in your heart is your responsibility. And we are with you. Be of great courage and do it. Be of great courage Come on. and do it. Come on. So the hesitation is being lifted off of both of you to step into that which you've been seeing. But the clarity will come now with understanding yeah. of how you do what you're seeing. And there's going to be an increase of the fear of the Lord upon both of you. Mm. And I hear the Lord saying that you will experience times that you will literally shake physically because of the fear of God upon you at his word to you because of the responsibility yeah, yeah. that he is asking you to carry is because he trusts you. He trusts you. Come on. And that I believe is an aspect when my husband said there's been betrayal. I believe there was trust that was shattered in your lives. And that's the God that redeems because he comes to that place of pain and what was meant to destroy you. And he says he has found you trustworthy. Come on. And you shall begin to walk in a great authority because of the fear of the Lord that is upon both of you. So Lord, we proclaim that that which was betrayal, Lord, that which was a weight that is upon them, no longer does it have, Lord, that pulling down in their minds, no longer is it a weight of consideration into what they are seeing, into what you are saying into what you have called them to. So we thank you, God, for clarity now. We thank you for the full light yes. upon your daughter. Yes. We thank you for the complete understanding upon your son. And we hear a divine do it, yeah. Yeah. a do it coming from heaven today, Lord. So we thank you that it is now doable with every natural provision That's it. That's and it. every spiritual equipping Glorious. necessary. Glorious. And we say, Lord, that which was said against them no longer identifies them, but they move now into the identity that yes. you have prepared yes. them for, into this identity Amen. that you have ordain them for, Lord, that breaks forth this day in their lives and in their family. In your powerful name, Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. Can you agree? Amen, Lord. We agree. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The two scriptures that God spoke to me tie in with what's said. Hebrews 6.10 and Hebrews 10.36. Hebrews 6.10 in 1036, Hebrews 6.10, God is not unjust, and he will not forget the labor, the love, the service of others. And Hebrews 10.36, that there's need to persevere when you've done the will of God to receive the promise. Every seed that has been planted will be reaped. Come the on. harvest will be reaped. There is need to persevere that when you've done the will of God, you have to continue. You've planted the seed, you've obeyed, the fruit will follow. And the image that I got is as we pray for you and as there was just prayer for you, a bobsled, have you ever seen the Olympics? It must be kind of terrifying to be shot out there, but you have to embrace the adventure of it to the point that when you go on the roller coaster, you go on the front seat and you raise your hands as you go. So the things, there's that, that holy terror but then the holy adventure in the midst of it. And, and as we pray, especially, I, I don't sing, but I do write, so I, I wanna believe God for that relief, that thrust you out. And it's, it's new territory because you've never been pushed like that. But when you realize it's God, you learn to embrace it and then you even learn to enjoy it. So Father, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. may that release 
come. Let it flow on your son, on your daughter. Thrust them out. Thrust them out. Push them over. Thank you, Holy Carry them. Yes. Anointing and grace. Thank you, Lord. few weeks or months ago we were in a service and I, I saw that breaker anointing over you Emily and then as Pastor Jan began to prophesy that there's an anointing for breakthrough over you I felt like Pastor Jan if you're willing or bear witnesses in you would you just release what's in you Jan there's a breaker anointing in you if there's a yes and amen, would you just come around in front of her and would you come just on. release it? Will you come. just agree with us, Lord? We're hearing you today and we are saying yes to your daughter. And we are saying, God, the authority of breakthrough, the authority to go into the enemy's camp and take the treasures is within your daughter, Lord. So we say, God, it will not be within the volume of her voice, but it will be in the authority and the fear of the Lord. Lord, I see her as she sings, pointing her finger at demonic spirits, at demonic strongholds, and they shall be shattered, and the enemy shall be defeated, and the addiction shall be broken, and the sexual tracts of abuse shall be healed and liberated, and depression will be completely lifted off. So, Father, we say there will be no limitations of the authority of your breakthrough through your daughter as she sings and as she prophesies and lord i just see again oh i just are you right or left-handed i hold the pointing of this finger Come on. and i say that she will point say, hold, to the strongholds and your power will be released even as the finger of god so lord we decree and declare it this day over her life in your powerful yes, name, yes, Jesus. Yes, yes. yes, God. Hallelujah. And Peter, as we prayed a breaker anointing on her voice and her songs and her singing, that same breaker anointing is on those books you will write yes. and those things you will say in pen form. And you will write them and the holy anointing will be upon. So Lord, I release that same breaker anointing that as she sings and as she speaks, breakthrough. But as he writes, as he writes, as he writes, write, write, write. Yeah, break her anointing on this household. Break her anointing on this household. Release it to the next level. Yeah, come on. Sing, 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 sing. Oh, come on, worship him, church. Worship him. Sing, Kadalaboko. Come on, come on. Anoint these hands, anoint these hands, anoint these hands, anoint these hands. Oh God, wake them up in the middle of the night with the revelation in Jesus' name. Lord, he will not be able to write fast enough as revelation comes. Emily, I see you as he's beginning to write. I see you singing over him <laughs> as he writes even. So I just encourage you, maybe you're already doing it, but I believe through you and the song, it will release the creativity within you. Yeah. Yes. 
There's deliverance right now in this moment. There's impartation in this moment. I feel right now strong. Years of struggles are being delivered right now in this moment. I declare the spirit of deliverance is in this house right now. I declare bondages are leaving men through their wives' prayers. Addictions are leaving men. Great insecurities. I feel this childhood insecurities. I also feel like there's an anointing right now for women to pray over your husbands right now. Even if you're not married yet, but you're believing for that next season. Right now, pray for him right now. Father, I pray right now that the spirit of unity come right now into marriages right now. Let the spirit of unity come into marriages marriages right now. I feel this so strong. Right now, marriages are being healed. I feel this in my spirit. Some husbands have said things over your wives that have hurt them. And in this moment, through the wife's words over the husband, those are going to be healed right now. I feel wounds in marriages are being healed right now. There's an expansion of spiritual territory that is taking place in this very moment. Feel there's another wave. Keep playing, band. Emily, just come stand out here and just prophetically sing. Point that finger. Point that finger. And just begin you to declare in the heavenly. You do it again. Oh, you did it before. You did.
give the Lord a hand of praise all over this place. Troy and Sarah, you wanna? Presbytery's a little different at Mercy Culture. So I was in, I was sitting back and uh, I felt that Pastor Jan was supposed to give this impartation of that breaker anointing that's on Pastor Jan. And then the thought came to my mind is, but what about PJ? <laughs> and then Dr. Brown goes, I'm not a singer, but I'm a writer. <laughs> How many books have you written? 44. He literally writes like a book every other week. I swear, every time I, he's like, here, here's my new, I'm like, I'm like I don't know if I can read fast as, as you can write, Dr. Brown. Mm, sweet spirit of Jesus, Love he's not done. You gotta, you gotta. I'm excited. Your word's a good word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm an old Pentecostal preacher. Can somebody just shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. This is fun. I was in the green room with your pastor, and I, I said, I said I, I'm always reminded of his counsel. Have fun. <laughs> Prophecy isn't, you know, I think there's a new breed of prophets. The old prophets used to be kind of heavy, and God's smiling right now. Yeah. Amen? What a good word for these couples, man. Is that your daughter? Yeah, I laid hands on her, too. I, did, I thought they were his, and he says, no, they're not, she's not mine. But she said, well, he said, but we'll take her. So you really need to hold on to her, because I got a fear. You got all boys? Okay, okay, oh my goodness. Five? Jesus, we take an offering for this couple and <laughs> just help them. Wow, wow. Troy and Sarah, gosh, I'm so glad. We've been hanging out. You didn't know that, did you? We've been, we've been hanging out. And, and I keep saying, and it's not just repetitious. I love you guys. Again, I don't think we've ever met. I don't think you've been in mercy culture, so you know us from a distance. You're the power team. I heard the Lord say that. You're the power team. That's why the battle has been so intense at times. The enemy knows who you are even better some ways than you know who you are. And he's frightened of you figuring it out. You're a power team. I heard the Lord say, tell them, and, and whether you know this already and it's an affirmation or it's a revelation, you just need to hear, I'm, I'm, I'm just the paper boy. I'm going to deliver the news. There's a healing anointing upon your lives. You're going to lay hands on sick people, and they're going to recover. You're going to, you're going to lay hands on people who are hopeless, and hope's going to come. There's an anointing on the two of you. That's why you're the power team. You can do your own thing, but when you come together, one puts 1,000, but two puts 10,000 to flight. There, there's also, Troy, there's a kingdom. You're a, uh, how'd the phrase come? A kingdom entrepreneur. It's who you are. There, there, is, there is a Joseph anointing on you. In fact, you know, you probably know. Do you know the, the story of Joseph? Do you know? Okay, okay. Serious. Oh, wow, man. Uh, okay, I'll try to find something new. Just a second. <laughs> But Joseph, whatever he did, God prosper it. You're going to do a lot of things. You've done a lot of things. You're just all over the place in the spirit is what I see. And, and, and God's going to put, in, put you in front of very significant influential people. You're going to be in some arenas, and you're going to even wonder, how did I get here? But like Joseph... He's going to take you from where you've been and he's going to put you in some very significant strategic people. This is your birthing season. This is your birthing season. The Lord says, tell them, oh, this is a good word. Tell them I've seen their sacrifices 
I know what you've given up and what you've given away for my kingdom. So would you just tell them, son, more is coming back. Press town, shaken together, and running over. I love you, Holy Spirit. Don't you love the Holy Spirit? I just love the Holy Spirit. He said, tell them, I've seen the sacrifice, but he specified, tell them, I know what you've given up. I don't. And I know what you've given away. And the Lord says, but I'm going to bring back to them more than they can even imagine. Sarah, there's a counseling gift on you, okay? You, 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 whether you know it or not, or maybe you do, and that's why that little giggle was, yeah, okay. But I heard the Lord say, but your counseling gift's going to go to another level. It's not going to be just counsel. It, what are you doing back there? Get over here. Gosh. Does she do that to you? Never. See, that's what I mean. You got a guy's got a great relationship. Folks, it's not good at home with me and Jan right now. Watch this. The Lord says, Sarah, I'm going to take the gift of counsel to another level, and you're going to move into a deliverance anointing. You're not just going to counsel, you're going to see and deliver them on the spot. There's, there's a healing anointing, but there's a real delivering anointing on you. And I see the two of you together. That's why you're the power team. And the word I got was, they're going to they, they're gonna go into the enemy's camp. Tough places. Scary places. Hope this doesn't scare you. I don't think it does. In fact, I think you already have done this stuff. In my spirit, I heard. The Lord said, no, this won't be unnew to them. In fact, the Lord says, I'm going to increase an evangelistic anointing upon you. Yes. Your, your, your evangelistic passion is going to another level. And the Lord says, you're going to go into the enemy's camp and take back and redeem and recover and bring those the enemy thought he would always have. That's why the battle has been so intense. That's why the attacks have been so strong. And the Lord says, tell them, this is a good word, tell them they are destiny changers. You're going to, we know it's the Lord. Amen? It's the Lord. But he doesn't do anything without his people. Amen? So he does it, but he uses you to get it done. And you're going to change destinies. You, you are a magnet. You're a discipler. You're a mentor. You're a molder of lives. It's interesting. Like Peter, I saw a pin in your hand. Just like him, as I was praying for you, I said, well, that's Peter's word. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I could only give one word. <laughs> sorry, Zane. I didn't understand how you work. And I thought, what is it? Tell him there's a pin in his hand. And as well, there are some books in you that are wanting to be written, and you want to write them, and you already have in fact, I feel like the Lord told me to tell you, you already have the, the titles and the chapters. Now, I don't need an affirmation, but am I close? Okay. Don't need it. I'm being silly. There's a platform for the two of you. You haven't sought the platform, but God has a platform for you. He's going to use you. There's a real teaching anointing on you. The ability to, to break down the word and to, and to, and to, to uh, deliver it in a way that people understand it. And God's going God's to amplify your ability to speak to people. Amen? amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Um, I heard the Lord say that you guys are childlike. And he immediately said, and that's why he's going to give you the kingdom. Ah, so good. And um, I happened to just look down here before you even came up on the platform. And God was already messing both of you up <laughs> before you even got up here. And I just 
when I looked down at you, I heard the Lord say, I dance over them. And he delights in you. Oh, so good. He delights in you and he's pleased with you. And what he told me is you both want to do so much for him. Uh -huh. You want to do this, you want to do that, you want to do that. Yes, I want to do this, I want to do that out of your love for him. And I heard the Lord say, you're gonna find yourself on a very clear road, a very clear path, and it's gonna end, and you're gonna have to go left or right. And when he showed me that, I saw where he was saying, you guys are weighing some things. You're uncertain, God, what is your come will? Come on, come on. What are you wanting, God? We'll do whatever you want, God. I can see there is a um, passion to be obedient to him upon both of you. But you've not only been passionate about obedience, you have added to you want to please him. But I heard the Lord say you're going to come to a place where you have to decide. And he's going to meet you in that decision. Oh, that's so good. And he reminded me in Acts verse 16, the Holy Spirit forbid or prevented Paul from going to Asia. And then we read on a couple of chapters later, same thing where the Holy Spirit prevented Paul from going to Jerusalem. And I heard the Lord say to tell you, his spirit will compel you to what you are to do. That's and good. you are to call upon the compelling of the spirit to give you direction. Is it left or is it right? Yeah. Or can I even say, ask the Holy Spirit, if you're not to do it, to place his hand and prevent you That's from good. doing That's it. Good. That's because good. you guys can't do enough for him. But he has purposed you in this season on a definite path. And that path is going to be made known now to a greater understanding. Yeah, and yeah. when that's known, there is going to be a confidence and an empowerment yeah, yeah, that yeah, will yeah. come to both of you. So Lord, we do decree that's right. over your daughter and Hallelujah. over your son this day that there is a supernatural attraction upon uh -huh. them. That's right, that's good. Oh God, there is a supernatural evangelistic mantle upon both of them. Lord, they will draw the heart and the mind of the bound. They will draw the couple that the marriage is almost ended. Come on. Oh God, they will draw the one Come that on. is totally Come. walking down the path of evil. They will be drawn to them because of the love that is upon both right. of their lives, That's Lord. Right. For they will move in the power of your love. They will move in the power of your compelling spirit. So, Lord, we say, make known the path, the road that you have purposed them even now. Lord, I just see the other thoughts are now falling away. And upon her mind, there is now the clarity of that which you are speaking and asking of her. Upon his mind, Lord, it is not this or that, maybe that, it is now this. So, Lord, we say that this path now comes forth with an attraction, Lord, that is only supernatural in your powerful. And, Lord, I just see on this road they are skipping and twirling that the joy of the Lord is going to be a supernatural. Yeah. In fact, the Lord says you will laugh and you will see deliverances. In Psalms 2, we read that God laughs and the enemy is destroyed. I see you laughing through Come your on. home. Yeah. I see you laughing and deliverance and chains are broken. There is a laughing deliverance.
delivering anointing upon both of you. So the Lord says, laugh, because your confidence is in Him. Yes, your confidence is Come Him. On. Lord, release Come your on. laughter. Release the holy oh, laughter, Lord. Lord. Release it in your people, your sons and your daughters, God. They will laugh at the enemy. They will laugh, Lord, at the strongholds. They will laugh, God, because our confidence is in you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, I love the Holy Spirit. He had given me the identical word about childlikeness. Matthew 18, Jesus said, such is the kingdom. But, but see, here's what happens. Over the years, we lose some of our childlike faith because, well, life doesn't always go that way. And, mm -hmm. you know, we get burned a little. We, so we believe, but we don't have that wide-eyed childlike faith. When I was here last month, I was with my 18-year-old grandson, Andrew. And as we were flying, so I fly all the time. I get upgraded a lot, but DFW often don't. So I said, hey, buddy, we both got upgraded. So she said, hey, Grandpa, favor. So anyway, as we're flying back out, get to the airport, and I say, how does the upgrade list look? They said, well, uh, your number's five and six, and there's only one seat available. So I said to him, hey, buddy, we're not getting upgraded, whatever. So as we're there waiting to get on, and I'm looking, I can see the list, and I said, so we're not getting upgraded. He said, Grandpa, there's a lot of favor on my life. He's 18. I said, buddy, there's a lot of favor on my life, too, and you're flying on my favor. He goes, I'm telling you. A few seconds later, Brown and Bruss, he goes, we just got upgraded, Grandpa. So that's, God, God wants to recover that's it. a child. Like, that's where the laughter comes from, because it's just this wide-eyed so child. Like, it's just to, to bring you in that place so where good. whatever's jaded you, it, it happens to all of us, disappears. And then if you prayed for the sick and they weren't healed, it can be hesitation. But that childlike faith, just, just believe, it's all real. Whoa, it's all real. So, Father, may a supernatural spirit of faith rise in them. And out of that, the joy. And out of that, the laughter. That's right. And out of that, the, the others get set free, Lord. May it be contagious. That supernatural spirit of yes. childlike faith. Yes. The wonder of it all. Come on. Exploding out of them Hallelujah. to set many free. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. me, not you. Would you stand to your feet all over this place? We just posture your hearts to receive. I'm going to pray the benediction. I'll dismiss our apostolic elders. As soon as I pray this, if you need prayer for anything, we're going to have prayer team members down here. Hmm. Lord, I pray that that childlike joy that was on Troy, I pray let it flow in this house. I pray it would be contagious. I pray your faith would be contagious. I pray prophecy would be contagious. I pray the gifts of the Spirit would be contagious in this house. Just breathe in the presence of God all over this place, would you? So, Lord, I pray, teach us your ways that we would know you and find your favor. Lord, bless your people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. We love you. Please quickly go get your children. Let the Clefses go first. They have five. We love you guys.